Welcome to Mulready Minutes with Oklahoma Insurance Commissioner Glenn Mulready. This is a podcast about insurance for insurance folks, risk managers, and business leaders. We'll dive deep and look at what is and isn't working, talk to leaders in the industry, and keep you informed on what's happening in Oklahoma and around the country. Hello, folks. This is Glenn Mulready, Oklahoma Insurance Commissioner. Welcome to another Mulready Minutes podcast, uh, where today we have a special guest with us, one of the stars of my team at the Oklahoma Insurance Department. We have Ashley Scott, and uh, we want to talk today about how the Oklahoma Insurance Department interacts with the legislature and and legislation and how that whole process works. Uh, Ashley brings a um, extensive experience in that arena. Ashley and I first met uh, when she worked in the Speaker's office on policy, and I happened to be a member of the House of Representatives just, just across the street. And so, Ashley, welcome. Thank we you. We look forward to uh, exploring that process uh, with you. So why don't you give us a little bit of a background, just a little introduction on Ashley Scott. Like you mentioned, I worked at the House of Representatives, did a lot of policy work for the Speaker um, under two different speakers, and then worked also um, doing policy with the Oklahoma State Health Department. So then I came here and and I'm doing some similar things here as well. Yeah, so the things you're working on for us are not new to you at all. I mean, I I know when you were in the Speaker's office, we interacted a lot. Um, Of course, I was always so very impressed with you, so it was just such a steal to get you to come over for us. I was excited to come. Glad to have you there. So walk us through uh, sort of what you do as far as legislation and that process and reviewing and revising. Uh, I know, uh, you know, we have the stuff you do internally in our in our building, but then across the street at the building to the things that you're doing there. Sure. So to start, we created a process, um, which was a form basically that allows our program areas and departments to submit potential requests of policy changes, legislation and rules. Um, we develop those um, processes um, through that through that form and it is very in in um has lots of information related to um, nationwide concerns, questions, things that are going on across the state with consumers and, and why that change would be beneficial to industry or, or the consumers that are um, partaking in insurance needs. So we develop that process. We um, have an intense um, discussion within our internal um, group on how that might impact Um, other entities and and other groups and then we move that um, through and we have that discussion then with our industry so we come together with industry and have a meeting and present those proposed changes and get their feedback and try to get as much information from them as to the pros and cons of a potential change and that way we make sure that we're doing everything we can to um, assist consumers and industry but not harm anyone and on you know unintentionally so um we work through that process very diligently to make sure that we're doing everything we can um to make those processes yeah and you've brought some good structure to our process folks may not realize that you know in in your role we we you (laughs) receive um information ideas uh, from lots of different avenues. I mean, w- you know, throughout the years, the insurance department might receive a number of complaints from consumers that brings to light, hey, we might want to make a change within our statutes. Uh, it also might be within our licensing area that, that there's a, a tweak or change that we might want to make, or maybe other folks have done that they've had great success in other states. So you have that from all different angles. And then as well, that comes from industry. I mean, so we might have insurance companies that we've got something that's maybe tying their hands. And I think you just said it well at the end. Our main goal is to uh, what do we do to advance consumer protections, but also assist and support the industry. So that's our Definitely. balance in the in the department. Absolutely. So talk a little bit more about the uh, the industry. I know we we just had a meeting two weeks ago, maybe that yeah, was. Yeah, it's and been a little talk while. About that. That. Yeah, we we invite industry. We um, go through the different ideas, different options, and ways to make potential changes that that we're seeing within, um, like you mentioned, our consumer assistance division and different things. And actually, let me just interrupt quickly. Excuse yeah. me, but when, when when you say industry, we're talking about just to clarify. We have property and casualty companies. Right. We have life and health companies. We right. have agents and brokers, yep. uh, kind of all different aspects when we say industry, anyone who touches right. that insurance side of things. Definitely. Um, and so we, we just try to work with them and, and share those ideas and those goals and what we're trying to do and make sure that um, we're not creating um, a burdensome process when we're maybe implementing new new ideas and things. Um, we also want to work with them to make sure uh, that we are 
um, allowing them to have input because it will impact those industry groups and we want to make sure that we're working um, hand in hand with them while we also try to protect consumers um, interests yeah yeah I, there was a, sp a specific topic as you say that that came to mind where we thought we might want to make a change uh, to help consumers but didn't know the detail of how best to do that so we thought sort of throw that out to the industry and look for feedback from them um, and they full well know the balance we're trying to to take there and so that that's just a helpful uh, helpful give and take um, I, I also might add i said earlier the insurance industry but that actually goes broader than that because really anyone that we regulate right. uh, in that meeting we had bail bondsmen uh, right. represented there and we have pbms pharmacy benefit managers other folks that we uh, we regulate are included when we say industry it's broader than just uh, just Correct. insurance yeah. so now let's talk a little bit about those priorities uh, even this year maybe just hit on on a few and then maybe at the end of that too if you can just talk about the neic sure. national association of insurance commissioners that we are a part of uh, regulators from around the country and you know that we have our own legislative priorities and things that are happening there so maybe talk some about those. Yeah, definitely so a couple of our um, priorities are um things that we've kind of come up as as the federal government has changed, maybe potential laws and rules, such as um, some, uh, some requirements on autism um, coverage and those types of things. And so we're trying to make sure that the state of Oklahoma, while we can pass and do what we want in, you know, within the state lines, but also being in compliance with federal federal rules and, and governance there. So we're making some changes there to become and in, go into compliance with CMS um, on some issues um, with autism coverage. We're going to also be looking at um, some rules, regulations related to the credit for reinsurance, which we passed last year. Um, we've got a couple of things on that end that have to be um, implemented to pre prevent preemption from the federal government um, through an agreement that was made with the United States and the, and the UK. And Ashley, maybe talk a little bit about, because some of the folks watching, listening may not understand the rules and regulations side of that, that we're, we're talking legislation and statutes, but then there's sort of another side of that coin sure. and talk about that process. Every, every state agency has a regulations and, or rules kind of used intertwined but um, those are basically used to explain um, how to do something that was maybe put into statute so they're more of an expansive um, idea on what that process looks like for the agency what you need to do to um, be able to come into compliance with maybe a state statute or whatnot and so um, those those are things that we're working on as well that also um, has a pretty tedious process similar to the legislative process where we have to do public hearings we have to um, get approval from the governor and the se cabinet secretary of our agency and then um, it also becomes a a bill in the legislative process towards the end of session um, where the legislature um, reviews those rule changes and and approves or disapproves and then um, the agency then can adopt those and move forward yeah it's sort of i don't know putting meat on the bones of a, of a law right they pass Very a law so. that okay we're going to do this then we have to spell out in rules and regulations how that's going to be exactly done. yeah yep good i interrupted you earlier anything else on neic or, or our priorities? I, I just think I'd like to make a point that the uh, NAIC and NCOIL are both two great national organizations that we work with on, um, you know, different basis but it helps us to see kind of the landscape um, across the nation and what's happening in other states so we can um, be prepared for what might be coming to Oklahoma so we can be prepared for things that are um, happening around around us in our region and whatnot and just gives us some great insight into what's going on and they have both both organizations have great processes set up when they're doing model laws and things of that nature um, to try to uh, make sure that whatever laws they're they're putting forth or acts that they're putting forth would um, also help industry and consumers and all of those people um, that they're invested in so that they're just two great organizations that help us a lot um, yeah. on seeing kind of what's to come and, and how we can adjust in Oklahoma when issues arise yeah and both of those uh, just so folks understand you know the NEIC is made up of 56 regulators mm -hmm. All states, D.C., plus some territories in there. And then NCOIL is the National Council of Insurance Legislators. So it's state legislators from around the country that specialize in insurance issues. Mm -hmm. Just a couple weeks ago, Ashley and, I, Ashley and I were attending a meeting for NCOIL. They had about 75 state legislators there. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking at ideas and um, potential laws and model laws that states can choose or not choose to implement. But the great thing about that process that I would just add to what you've said is it's – 
Well, it's 56 regulators, and it's 50 states with NCOIL. And so you've got, well, folks can relate to this. you got Oklahoma, you know, trying to reach an agreement with California and New York, and they're quite different in their process, but that's a very thorough vetting process and, and very helpful. And NEIC has uh, had me attending those meetings as a liaison mm -hmm. to the NCOIL meetings, I think, as a former member of that as well. And so uh, it's a real helpful organization, both of them, to, to be a part of for our legislative uh, issues. So. Yeah. And to that point, the the NAIC is our accrediting um, body. So there are things that come out of the NAIC that are requirements for us as a as an insurance commission department to um, implement to ensure that we're up to date with accreditation, uh, reciprocity with other states so that our licensees have those flexibilities and, and the ability to maintain licenses so yeah one other thing as we as we prepare to close out Ashley is you had a meeting yesterday uh, with some state legislators not okay. that you have to talk about that specifically but um, even aside from industry and aside from legislative session talk a little bit about that and and why you bring those folks together to sure well a lot of them have as interest in those some of them are in the business of insurance some of them are um you know just great people to work with we we need our legislators they're the reason and how we get our laws and, and statutes and changes passed and so we like to work diligently with them and make sure that they're part of that conversation from the beginning um it's always more helpful, I think, to start that way and work through whatever concerns there may be um, prior to legislative session starting. So we always want to work with our partners at the legislature and making sure that we um, uh, do right by their their citizens and their and the consumers of the industry. Yeah, because and to Ashley's credit, pulled that together. Yeah, it was a meeting with some legislators who specialize in a certain area. This happened to be pharmacy issues. And um, yeah, getting their input because we have input from some industry. We have our own ideas how mm -hmm. things could work a little better, but taking the extra effort before session even starts to sit down and kind of iron that out and talk through what we might not be um, thinking of or what we, we might miss. So definitely great job on that. Thank you. I think that about wraps it up. Anything else that yeah. do you want to throw out there on <clears throat> Ashley as you have um, years and years now <clears throat> been watch watching the uh, Sausage making, as they say, uh, across <laughs> the street. Uh, it can be fun and it can be yeah. crazy, but thank you for what you do. Thank you. I enjoy so, being here. Good. So that uh, that really wraps up this uh, edition of the Mulready Minutes podcast. Uh, we've had Ashley Scott talking about uh, the legislative process and the Oklahoma Insurance Department, and we will see you next time. If you found this episode informative, please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Visit oig.ok.gov slash podcast. Let us know what topics you would like to hear about on this podcast. Until next time, take care from the Oklahoma Insurance Department.